I call Tim McIndoe. Mr Speaker, it seems to be my lot to follow the former member for Hamilton West in this debate tonight. And may I say how disappointed I am to hear him again attacking the integrity of some members of the flag consideration panel, because I stand by the comments I made before that I believe that they're a very fine group of people. They are a representative cross-section of New Zealanders, and they've served our country well. So both Mr Mallard and before him, Mr Robertson, have again lamented the absence of a simple yes-no vote in the referendum process. But there are two fundamental flaws in the argument that they and some others are putting forward. The first is that the construction of this referenda process, a two-stage referenda, is based on the very best advice that was, a, was made available independently to the government. And so the government listened to that and has acted upon it. And the second, which I think is even more important point, is that the two main parties went to the 2014 general election promising to hold a referendum on this particular issue. And three out of four New Zealanders, slightly more than that, cast their votes in favour of one of those two main parties. So they have already had their yes-no option, and now we're moving to the next stage in the process, which is to say, well, let's give you a range of things to choose from, Make a choice, we'll put it up against the current New Zealand flag, which I acknowledge is an attractive flag in its own right, and we'll let New Zealanders decide which one they want to have at the end of that. Well, sir, that is a very democratic and appropriate process, and it's one that I'm very proud to support. I've been particularly disappointed to hear Mr Robertson suggesting that the National Party has been playing political games over this issue. Because, sir, we campaigned on this, We've been upfront about it for a very long period of time. We've gone to the public. We're having the discussion in the public. We're listening to the public. We are listening to the public tonight by saying, let's offer a little bit more choice than the flag consideration panel put forward. And that, to my mind, is responsible and sensible government. And I have to say to Mr. Mallard, uh, sorry, to Mr. Robertson, that the gamesmanship here is the party that wants to change the flag, that campaigned last year to give New Zealanders the chance to change the flag, but can't bear the fact that the flag might change while the National Party is in government. So solely for that reason, they are opposing it now. Well, that, to my mind, is the ultimate in political cynicism and gamesmanship, and shame on the Labour Party for that. Sir, in the first reading, Mr Mallard attacked the current Prime Minister and he's just repeated it with words to the effect that the Prime Minister should stand up for his principles and beliefs on this issue. And he's attacked the Prime Minister for not having spoken in the flag referendum bill. Well, sir, is there a single New Zealander who is unaware of where the Right Honourable John Key stands on this issue? I don't think so. The Prime Minister not only outlined his views very clearly in the address and reply debate this year, he has answered questions day after day after day in this House from the opposition, giving his views very forcefully and clearly on this issue. He has attended numerous public meetings. I've been at some of them where he has articulated his vision and he's listened to the public. Sir, the Right Honourable John Key is leading in a very honourable and responsible way, and I'm proud to support him in that and to suggest that he has in some manner kept his views to himself is absolutely ridiculous. So, sir, I want to again state how proud I am that we in the National Party are delivering on our manifesto, and in particular, for the first time in this nation's history, given, giving the public of New Zealand the chance to have a say in which flag they feel would best represent them. They have never had this opportunity before. And if we vote for change, the new flag would be the fourth flag in the history of this nation. So it is hardly credible to suggest that somehow the current flag should be respected and kept in perpetuity when we've already had three previous flags. Sir, I have to say I'm not a supporter of Red Peak, and that I do agree with Mr Mallard. But I recognise that there are many who have indicated that they would like more choice and that they would like to consider that option. And for that reason, as I said before, I'm proud that our government is listening to those people. And I want again to acknowledge Gareth Hughes in particular and the members of the Green Party. We're not always natural political bedfellows, but I think that they are playing a very honourable and 
uh, clear role, clearly constructive role in this process, and I thank them for that, because I think that the effect of the Green Party's involvement in this particular issue tonight will be to ensure that it is more widely supported than it has been perhaps to date, and that's a good thing. So, sir, I genuinely thank the Green Party for what I think is a very helpful contribution. I'm more than happy to see the fifth option go into the process, but more importantly, I'm more than happy to respect the democratic will of the people. And if they vote to retain the current flag, well, so be it. But I'm proud that we're giving every New Zealander a chance to have a say. I believe that's the right thing, and I am therefore very strongly in support of this bill.